In this lesson, we'll continue our view of Math Test 8, Section 4, Calculator Permanent Questions 25 and 26. So we're getting a little bit further into the problem solving section. Let's take a look at the first question, number 25. The table below shows the population of Greenleaf, Idaho for the years 2000 and 2010. If the relationship between the population and years linear, which of the following functions models the population of Greenleaf two years after 2000? So they're telling us it's a linear population. It, in this case, if we look at the relationship in 2000, we have 862. In 2010, it's 846. And so we see there's a decline here. We went from 862, that was the starting amount, and lost 16 people. And T years, this is 10 years. And so we can figure out, if it's 16 over 10 years, we can figure out the expected annual decline. So we divide this by 10 and we get negative 1.6. This is the annual decline. Really, this is the slope that this town Greenleaf can expect every year. And we need to get the linear equation. What about the y-intercept? What's the starting amount before any change? The starting amount is 862. And so this is just another linear equation to set to a, a practical application. And we know that it would be negative 1.6 times t, that's the number of years, plus the y-intercept, the starting amount, which is 862. And that's it. And we look at the choices, it is A, right? Here's the fixed amount, the y-intercept, there's the negative slope, 1.6 times the number of years. All right, let's take a look at question 26. To determine the mean number of children per household in a community, Tabitha surveyed 20 families at a playground. For the 20 families surveyed, the mean number of children per household was 2.4. Which of the following statements must be true? So you want to be careful just by reading it. You can almost predict where this is going to determine the mean number of children in a community. Now, if we're making a determination about the population, which is all the people in the community, you always have to have a fair random sample. And you can just tell right away if they're only asking people at a playground, is that fair? Is that a fair cross-section of the community? No. And also, people at playgrounds probably have kids, don't they? So that's going to skew, I think, the, the results. So let's take a look at the choices. The mean number of children per household in the community is 2.4. No, because I, this is not an accurate random sample. They're asking specific, very specific place, which I think would definitely skew the observation. A determination about the mean number of children per household in the community should not be made because the sample size is too small. 20 families is not necessarily too small. It's really just where the venue, where they ask these families. That doesn't make it random. The sampling method is flawed and may produce a biased estimate of the mean number of children per household in the community. Yes, it is flawed because it's they're asking this, this specific venue, which definitely could be biased if they're only asking families at playgrounds where kids are likely to be. Let's just take a look at D. The sampling method is not flawed as likely to produce an unbiased estimate of the mean number of children per household in the community. This is the opposite of C, and definitely it is biased. The answer here is C.